Hello everyone, welcome to Explore Africa series and we're going to be looking at the Kingdom of Mali and Timbuktu today. So as we usually do, introduction of the Kingdom of Mali and Timbuktu, then we're going to look at objectives, we'll go through a general history and um, summarise through timeline, then we'll do a quiz just to see how well you were paying attention and we shall conclude. So, introduction. The Kingdom of Mali was a West African empire and it flourished during the Middle Ages and was renowned for its wealth, power and cultural achievements. Timbuktu, a city within the empire, gained fame as a centre of learning and trade, making significant contributions to African history and civilization. So if you look at that um, map on there, you see how extensive the Kingdom of Mali was like, look, it had parts of Niger, Burkina Faso and Mauritania and Algeria, just touched on those parts. And on the left hand side, we can see the beautiful architectural structure um, that was part of the Mali Empire. So beautiful. Look at those doors. You look at the details on those doors and look at the curvature of these walls as well. So it was a beautiful structure and um, as we go through, we're going to see more and more structures like this. So objectives. So we're going to explore the origins and the rise of the Kingdom of Mali. Then we're going to understand the significance of Timbuktu as a centre of learning and trade. And as you can see in that image, those are books and those are like scripts and then we're going to look at the uh, decline of the Mali Empire and Timbuktu's lasting legacy. So, oh my God. the Mali Empire emerged around the 13th century from the remnants of what the Ghana Empire was. And as you can see that image, that image is of Sundiata Keita, a legendary figure. And he's credited with founding the Mali Empire after defeating the Soso Kingdom. And on the left, we see parts of what was the Ghanaian Empire. So look at all these structures. Like, what do these remind you of? They're lions. And what do they remind you of? Royalty. Yes, it reminds you of royalty. And also, it reminds you of, like, the structure in Egypt. You know, the Sphinx. And you can see oh. how similar the, the, the sculpture was. So you can see that connection with ancient Egypt in, you know, um, African culture today. And, and also it's almost similar, similar to like the big cats in Egypt. Very true. Fantastic observation. Very true. So we're going to learn about Mansa Musa's wealth, um, which we already know because we once did um, a series on Mansa Musa. So you shouldn't have forgotten that quickly. So Mansa Musa is Mali's most famous ruler. He was one of the wealthiest individuals in history, in fact, of the world, due to Mali's gold reserves. And remember, he had so much gold that he caused an economic situation in Egypt. He flooded Egypt with so much gold that it took them, I think, 12 years before they recovered because there was so much gold that their economy became devalued in terms of gold because gold was just everywhere. And it took them another 12 years before they um, recovered. So um, his famous pilgrimage to <laughs> Mecca in 1324 showcased Mali's opulence and boosted its reputation across the Muslim world. And this is what brought eyes of the world in terms of the European explorers. This was what brought their focus on Africa because they heard about his reputation. They heard about all the gold and their greedy eyes, their greedy hands wanted some of that so hence they started all their voyages and you know um exploration antics to come to uh, the continent of africa to try and get some of that gold so trade in gold we know that the, the, the mali empire the kingdom of mali had a lot of gold and also remember that they acquired a lot of this gold through trade and sometimes through battles with other regions that they would then conquer and be able to get their hands on the wealth. So Mali's wealth was fueled by gold trade with significant gold mines located within its territory. The empire controlled important trade routes, 
exporting gold to North Africa and the Mediterranean. All the yellow bit is um, the Mali Empire. So that's how much it covered. And the, the, the broken red lines are the routes. Those are the trade routes in terms of how it transported its goods and how it sold its goods. Timbuktu's importance. Timbuktu was a major city in Mali and it became renowned as a centre of Islamic learning and it attracted scholars and intellectuals from all over the world. It also housed famous universities and libraries and contributed to advancements in science, literature and Islamic studies. And unfortunately, the library was destroyed, um, but libraries. thankfully... Yes, thankfully, there are lots of uh, the documents that were retrieved. Um, so that's part of the legacy that the Mali library. Empire has left us library. today. Yes, that's the library. And on the upper left-hand side, this is what uh, Timbuktu looked like. The extent of the Mali Empire, as you can see, it extended into parts of Jene, into Gao, most of Timbuktu and um, at its peak the Mali Empire stretched across West Africa so in today's terms regions like Senegal, Mali, Niger and parts of modern-day Ghana and Burkina Faso. Its vast territory made it one of the largest empires in African history so not only just the largest but the wealthiest and its wealth is still spoken of uh, today. Architectural success the city of Jene within Mali is famous for its great mosque, an impressive example of Sudanese Sahelian architecture. Um, its construction using adobe brickwork is an example of the empire's architectural prowess. So again, as we see, the, a lot of these structures are made, you know, from red mud and beautifully done and even just like the curvature as you can see you know it's just amazing and it's stunning and to think that these structures are still standing like today and it's still in use even today and remember like clay and red mud is very very important in Africa because of the properties that it, it holds because when you make a structure of clay what it does is it has um, um, a lot of porosity within it so it means that you can keep the inside of the house really cool in hot weather whilst protecting yourself from the elements so clay is very very important in terms of our um, African architecture so decline and fragmentation um, Internal revolts, conflicts and invasions by neighbouring states weakened the Mali Empire. By the late 15th century, the empire began to fragment into smaller states, diminishing its power. And this is not just um, typical of Mali Empire. Most empires always self-imploded, in a sense, um, because it was always due to infighting like, or power struggle, Maybe the person that was on the throne, um, somebody else was vying to be on the throne and then they would create their own groups, they would create their own supporters and then there'll be this power struggle because as the saying goes in the Bible, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So it made sense that at some point, you know, they were going to fall. And in the case of the Mali Empire, they broke up into smaller states. And when you're smaller states, you're more susceptible to um, outside elements, to external forces, because you don't have the protection militarily um, as you would do if you were part of a bigger unit. So it, it makes sense to be a unit. It makes sense to be unity and form alliances that can then strengthen you. But, you know, as, as, a, as we see in history, Every empire has its time of reign and uh, no surprises that with the Mali Empire, it came to an end uh, by the late 15th century. European exploration. Now, if you notice, every time we talk about African history, we always have a mention of Europeans because at some point they came into the continent and they caused a lot of mayhem, a lot of devastation, a lot of destabilization, um, a lot of unrest. 
a lot of interference. So they caused a lot of disaster throughout the African continent that we're still experiencing today. So European explorers like the Moroccan traveler Ibn Battuta visited Mali and Timbuktu and recorded their observations of the empire's wealth and culture. So he's probably the one that went and told everybody else in terms of the wealth that Mali had. And this probably was why um, African continent became of interest because everybody wanted to know where's the gold because gold is a precious metal, precious commodity. Whoever has access to it has power. So of course, European interest in the region increased following reports of Mali's riches. Timbuktu's manuscript. So here, as you can see in the images, like, you know, these are some of the documents, literature, uh, manuscripts that were recovered that are still in existence today, thankfully. And the reason that it's so important to have these documents is that it tells us how intellectual Africans are and not just how intellectual they, they are, but how they recorded information. And a lot of this information was beneficial to the rest of the world, to the development of, you know, things today, engineering novelties, mathematical novelties, even the development of language. You know, we have a lot of the manuscripts and the recovery of the documents. We have them to be thankful for and to the part that it's played in the, in the, on the world stage. So Timbuktu's libraries contain numerous manuscripts and various subjects, preserving knowledge and literature from Africa and the Islamic world. Um, these manuscripts highlighted the city's historical importance as a centre of intellectual exchange. So modern significance, the historical legacy of the Mali Empire and Timbuktu remains a source of cultural pride and heritage for present day Mali and neighbouring regions. Timbuktu's manuscripts and architectural remnants serve as reminders of the empire's past glory. And as you can see, again, this structure is a one of familiarity. The minute you see the structure, you immediately know that these are like from the Mali empire. It's so iconic. And some of these structures are actually part of world um, heritage, uh, world heritage um, mark on it. So basically, um, this is one of the libraries that is still in existence to today. And you can tell it's still in existence because you have tourists visiting there and taking pictures because it's quite an important location. And it's, part of, it's quite an important legacy of the past and uh the fact that this was once part of the Mali Empire and it's still around today is a beautiful thing. Um, because what you also have to bear in mind is that a lot of the times, um, some of the structures, African structures, were destroyed by European invaders. And a case, an example, is the Benin Empire. It once had the largest wall that enclosed um, an empire um, once upon a time, even longer than the Great Wall of China, but unfortunately there are only parts of that wall that is still in existence because it was destroyed by uh, the British. So it's beautiful to see that this structure is still in existence and that if you were to go to Mali today you'd be able to go and look in and, and, and see what it was like. Um, so timeline. So 13th century, Mali Empire emerges under Sundiata Keita. By the 14th century, um, we hear about Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca. And in the 15th century, there's a decline and fragmentation of the Mali Empire. And by the 16th century, European interest in West Africa increases. Quiz. Quiz at you. Question one. Who is said to have founded the Mali Empire? A. Sundiata Keita. B. Mansa Musa. C. Ibn Batuta. Question two. What made Mansa Musa famous? A. His military conquests. B. His pilgrimage to Mecca. C. His exploration of Timbuktu. Question three. Which city became a renowned centre of Islamic learning in the Mali Empire? A. Jene. 
B, Gao, C, Timbuktu. Question four, what was the primary source of wealth for the Mali Empire? A, salt trade, B, gold trade, C, spice trade. Question five, what led to the decline of the Mali Empire? A, European invasions, B, internal conflicts, and external invasions, C, trade disruptions. Answers. Conclusion. So the Mali Empire, as I mentioned, started around the 13th century and it grew powerful through gold trade with Mansa Musa, its wealthiest ruler, making a famous pilgrimage to Mecca, okay? Timbuktu, a centre of learning, attracted scholars and was essential for preserving manuscripts and knowledge. So these are what the manuscripts look That's like. That's Arabic. Yes. A lot of them were Muslims, if not mm. all. Yeah. And finally, the empire declined due to conflicts, leading to fragmentation, but its legacy in architecture, manuscripts and culture remains vital in Mali's history. So thank you all for listening. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.